Welcome back to Stu Structures. I am Mark Stewart and we're here to do some scratch building. Oftentimes when you want something for your model railroad it's just not available in kit form. So I'm here to show you how to go through the process of scratch building these structures for your model railroad. We'll go through the entire process of modeling from uh, coming up with the resources, pictures, prints, uh, measurements, to getting the materials for the, the structure, and then uh, the, going through the whole process of building the structures. And then oftentimes you'll have the uh, self-satisfaction of the fact that you built this for your model railroad and that no one else is going to have one exactly like it. This is an exciting process that uh, we'll go through in this channel and you'll hopefully you'll learn how to scratch build structures for yourself. So sit back, grab a cup of coffee, grab your tools and your materials and let's do some scratch building. Welcome back once again to Stu Structures. I'm Mark Stewart and I had given you a fair warning last week that we were going to change directions a little on my channel. Now we are going to go ahead and finish Sparky's house this week. I've got gutters to put on, just touch-ups, just a lot of little things to accomplish in this. Uh, we still have to mount that uh, uh, dish for his TV on the side of the house so once he moves in he can get TV. I don't want him to be bored to death and have to model railroad 24 hours a day. <laughs> Uh, he might like that. I'm not sure about his family agreeing with that. Uh, but in any case, we are going to finish Sparky's house. And the new direction is just the fact that I'm going to uh, just basically do a blog each week on everything that I've worked on through that week instead of just one project every week. Normally, I have many things going on in the background while I'm you know, building the structure that I'm putting up a video on that week. And you know, sometimes it's two or three different projects. So from now on, what I'm going to do is just put up a life, uh, a week in the life of a model railroader type of scenario. And uh, we're going to finish Sparky's house, and then in the middle of the video, we'll show you some of the other things I'm working on this week and uh, the new directions we're heading in. And uh, we'll go from there. So let's get busy with Sparky's house. And the first thing we want to look at really is, is this side over here. You know, I'd started making the satellite dish in the last video and this meter for the wall and everything. So, you know, I'm going to come back and start gluing stuff on to work from. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this water meter or water meter, electric meter into place. And then uh, we can do something to get some electric hooked up. And the satellite dish was like this, uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and glue it on, but the painting is just a little too dark on this, so I am going to repaint it, but I'm just going to do it in place. And I needed two more uh, pipes to go onto the meter, the electric meter, so I went ahead and cut these to length and bent the uh, part at the top for the electric me uh, wires to come into from the power pole. And then I'm going to glue those on. You can see those in place here and the satellite dish glued onto the side. And I'm going to go ahead and move on to trying to do some gutters. So here you can see some uh, st uh, rod styrene and my heat gun is behind it. I, I'm using it on a low setting of about 500 degrees. And I just you know hold this in front of it just for a few seconds and it's soft enough and pliable to where I can bend these at the top. And I just start coming back and putting these gutters on all the corners where the gutters go on to. Uh, some are in the middle of walls, some end walls, some second story, some first stories. Uh, but you know, here you can see some of these just drain onto the roof of the second story, which then drains into the gutter of the first story. And you know, there's a few of these like this. There's this one here, and here's the end shot of the far end of the garage, and the two gutter systems coming down with the downspouts off of those. And you know, I'm just working my way around the building. Now, you know, this gutter on the front of the porch here, this actually wraps around this inside corner. And I didn't do that when I initially built it. And when I went back and looked at the pictures, I had to come back and add this extension of the gutter onto that side of the house. 
because the only place for a downspout to come down is off of that front corner. So once I get that in place, I come back and put this downspout on the front corner. And you know, we're coming to the close of all the gutters. Now this one gutter, the, 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 uh, the angles that I bent on it just brought it out a little bit past the gutter. So what I did was this was just get my X-Acto knife and carve the face down and you know make it come flush with the outside of the gutter and you know it's just it's not really noticeable at this point. Now the few windows that had popped out that I had mentioned in the previous video, I had to come back and just start gluing some styrene in all these windows. And there, you know, there was just a few of them, not a lot. And then I want to go ahead and put a, uh, a view block on the inside of this. So I found this black paper and I measured it from opposite corners to opposite corners. And I cut these pieces here and then right in the very middle of them I cut a slot halfway down. And by doing that, then I can come back like this and slide the two together and form an X kind of to work as a view block. Now I had cut these just a little long, so I had to come back and trim them just a little bit. But then I fold these into these corners, so when you're on the you know, looking at the house from the outside, you can't see from one window clear through the house and outside the other house. Now some of the cables for the satellite dish, you know, I, I stripped down some wire and I was going to paint this black and use this wire and it was just really a pain in the butt. So what I decided to do is come back with black thread, which at that scale you can't tell the difference in wire and thread at that scale. So I glue this to where it comes out of the back of the dish and then I start down to the through the wall like it normally is, you know, in the picture that I have. Now the other thing on this side of the wall that we have not worked on yet is this uh, gas meter. And I, you know, I'm just cutting small pieces and glue a bunch of little tiny things together to kind of represent a gas meter. So I glue the top and the round uh, body to this uh, styrene, little thin styrene. And then once I have that glued and dried, I just cut the, you know, the, the face of it off. And then I come back and do the other side of the round piece at the bottom. Now I did trim these, you know, it's just slightly at angles and stuff like that, but once I get it all trimmed down, I'm going to come back and use a file on these edges as well and make them a little more rounded. They're too square. And once I have that done, you know, there's this little uh, pressure valve that goes down the pipe on the side of it. There's a pipe that comes out of the top of that, you know, and just once this is all glued together, the regulator and the meter and everything, then, you know, it's to the point that I can go ahead and get that mounted on the wall. But the other thing I want to do is add these, in the front of that, there's a glassed area which has little tiny meters in it, which the gas people come and read to give you a bill every month. So I just cut paper to make that out of and glue the whole assembly on the wall. Now I did come back and put some Gorilla Glue over that paper to kind of give it a glazing. And then, you know, I wasn't sure where to take this cable at the bottom, so I'm just taking it, I'm not sure where it goes into the house. So I'm taking it to this pipe here where the electric meter is and I'm going to cut it off. Now on the top of the gas meter, there's also another pipe that comes up just under this windowsill and enters the house. And you know, it really turns and goes into the wall, but I didn't bend the pipe and do that. I just trimmed the top of the pipe to make it look like it was curved into the house. And then I add this second pipe that's, I'm not sure what this was for on the right hand side of the meter there coming down. And then went ahead and painted the union and everything. And at this point, you know, I didn't notice till I was loading all this and I can't go back and do it at, for, you know, at this point in time. So anyway, uh, you know, just this time for the turntable. Basically, that's all the parts and everything on the house. It has some slight discrepancies, but you know, I'm, I'm okay with it. I think it turned out really nice and I think it'll look good on the layout. And these are just several shots as, you know, different angles of the house and the way it's represented on the, uh, you know, the pictures that were there and the, what I did to it. And, you know, is it exact? No, there's a lot of little discrepancies. If you want to knit and pick, you can. You know, window, windows are just slightly out of scale, maybe from the little ones to the big ones on the front. Some of these angles and stuff are... 
you know, they're, they're close, but they're not perfect. Uh, you know, but I think it's a good representative of the house. Now you could come back and touch up paints and cover glues and do tons and tons of stuff forever and ever and ever on this house. But at this point, you know, I don't want it to be the focal point of the of the rail his model railroad. So you know, I think this looks good. I mean, he could come back and do some weathering and stuff and make it look a whole lot better than that. But basically, you know. It, I think it looks pretty good. The back side of the house, these two small windows in this square shed that's attached to the back of the house are a little high on the model, and I wish I had taken them down some, but you know, by the time I had glued all that in place and realized what was going on, I just decided, you know, I'm going to live with it the way it is. They're just going to have to get on their toes to look out those two windows. I'm not sure what that room is in the house, but uh, you know, that it, it's 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 Close enough for military work, I guess. So there you have the completion of Sparky's house. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm a slow builder. I think he could have built a real house quicker than what I built this one for Sparky. Uh, but anyway, you know, that's finished. Uh, so we're moving on to another project. Actually, I've got a couple things that I'm playing with. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and get started on one of them to finish out this video. And the thing I'm going to work on is a uh, little small motorized unit that was called the Jitney. Now back between, uh, was 1921 and 1928, uh, in a little area where my mom grew up, which was a coal mining community called Broughton, and right next to it was another small community called Galloway. And they were, you know, a couple of Y branches that went out to a city called Flemington, West Virginia, which was just uh, west of Grafton, West Virginia, on the B&O Main Line. And back during those days, the roads were just, you know, mudded, rutty, bad. You just couldn't, most of the year they were impassable by cars. You just couldn't get in and out. So the only way for transportation was to ride this jitney in and out. And it was just a homemade, a uh, wooden box type of a bus and uh, people would pay 30 cents to go out to Flemington or back and from there you could catch the uh, the, the main line uh, passenger trains to Grafton or on west of Clarksburg uh, the main uh, trains that came through there did not stop in Flemington it was just another little uh, you know dusty town that uh, didn't have much of a population uh, but in any case, a lot of people rode this, <clears throat> and for 30 cents you could ride from Broughton or Grafton out to Flemington and get to somewhere where you could do more shopping or visit with family in other cities or things like that. So we're going to go ahead and get started on this, and we're going to build the Jitney. Now the Jitney, you know, the first thing I'm going to work on here is uh, we need to get this uh, truck front end, and you know, that's... I just can't, I don't want to scratch build that. So, you know, I've got two of these for my circus train. So I just decided to go ahead and use one of these Model T Fords. And it's, you know, it's about the right time period too. So, you know, I went through the kit and just robbed these parts out of it. And, you know, I might use the rest of the kit for some other scratch building project down the road. But this gives me a basis for the uh, front end. And I have some of these Pike stuff, old passenger car seats, some weights. You know, I was looking at the wheels off this hand car, and it's just not going to serve the purpose. So I'm going to do something else for that. But I go ahead and glue this front end together. And the seats out of the package, you can see here, are, are you know in, in groups of three, and they're a little too wide for what I want. So I'm going to have to come back and doctor these, but they're a good source to work from. Now the wheels, like I said, I'm going to use these tubing here and just make some wheels. I use my Dremel tool and just cut off a whole bunch of these circles uh, from the large black tubing. And, you know, they're not perfect, so I, I cut a bunch of extras. And, you know, I'm just using a, a disc on my Dremel and then I'm using this center, um, this other uh, router type of bit to cut out the centers of them and make the treads a lot thinner. 
and then once I get that done I just use a little vise on my desk to do that and once that's done I glued those onto the uh, flat stock that I'm using for the back side of the wheel and then I cut that other small tubing and put it in the center of that and then you know then I just go on and right down the line start making more of them and out of the all those discs that I cut off I found eight that are fairly decent ones and you know here's one of them kind of finished and you know I'm going to use some files and come back and clean the edges and stuff up but basically this this will work for what I want and you can see this one I started getting some paint on and you know I'm just gonna come back and there's the, the next two in line and I'm gonna do a total of eight of those I start going through those spare parts in that kit and finding you know axles and things like that to use I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this rear end or not okay so there we have the start of the jitney uh, you know I, I normally work on two or three projects at a time this week I was only working on two because my nursery's just getting ready to explode and I just don't have time to do more than what I've done. Uh, I was even pushing it to try to get this done this week, but I really needed to get it done. Uh, you know, the Sparky's HO character on his layout's been out in the rain for a long time, so we need to get him a house and have all the electric and TV and all that for him to uh, have to live by the gas for the heat. Uh, being as still winter outside, he probably would appreciate the heat. Uh, you know, and I'm, I'm pleased with the, the, the house from working from pictures and trying to scale everything up from a, few, you know, from a doorway, basically, and scaling the whole house from a door. Uh, you know, it, it, it's not that, it, you know, if you're looking for something that just snaps together and you're done in a couple evenings, this is not the kind of project. Uh, but if you want something that you cannot buy out there in stores, this is the only way to do it. I mean, a lot of times you can get, you know, go measure the building or, uh, you know, have blueprints for the building you're working from or more information to work from. Uh, but Sparky had asked me if I could build it from pictures and I had, I'd volunteered to do it. So once he sent me the pictures and I looked at it, I said, well, sure, let's go for it. I don't mind a small challenge. And is it perfect? No, there's definitely some little differences. A few of them I pushed, uh, put out there in, uh, you know, in the videos as I was building the house. Uh, but all in all, I think it turned out pretty well. So then on to the jitney. You know that this is something I, I think I'm finding it fun to make. Uh, you know, and will you use this information to build stuff for yourself? I don't know. Uh, you know, making the little small wheels. I just didn't have anything that small that I could use underneath of it, and I didn't want to steal the wheels from the few pieces of HO scale maintenance away equipment that I had. And actually, they were just a little small for this particular uh, vehicle. So, you know, I just decided to make the wheels, and you know, it's just going to be a static display. I had debated on motorizing it, but then you know the seats and everything inside you really couldn't do because you would need all the space for the tiny motor to do it, and it would really complicate the build to make something the build to make something that was usable on the model railroad. And I'm not really modeling uh, Brownton and, and uh, Galloway. I, you know, I debated adding that into my uh, layout at some point down in the future. You know, when I have a building to put my layout in. But uh, I just, I don't think I'm going to do that. So this is going to be more of a static display. Uh, something that, you know, when we have an open house, maybe at the Grafton Model Railroad Association, I can put it in a little um, shadow box with a small scene or something. And uh, people would appreciate that and the local history there. Uh, so that's really what I'm building it for. And, you know, it's just my mom grew up in Brownton. My grandfather mined the mines and graft or building, or yeah right learn to talk here they lived in Broughton and you know there were seven coal mines in Broughton it was really really a huge area for coal Galloway had a huge huge mine that just put out tons and tons of coal uh, the seven mines in Broughton they loaded 247 coal cars in one day from seven mi little mines up that way you know, that that was back when you didn't have machines going in and digging the coal. You had a 30-inch seam of coal and you had a miner laying on his side with a pick 
breaking chunks of coal out and shoving it down along his body to his feet to where he could push it with his feet on back to the next guy and they'd be shoving it on back and they would load little tiny hoppers uh, behind him in the coal mine and run the hoppers out to chutes or conveyors or whatever to load the coal cars. So, you know, th that's just impressive. 247 coal cars from seven mines in a day. Uh, that's just unbelievable with nothing but manpower. They did use some uh, uh, donkeys and horses from time to time to move the cars. Uh, and later on, you know, they had steam shovels and, 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 and more mechanized equipment, but it just amazes me. Nobody in today's world would even consider working those kinds of conditions and putting in that much manual labor to, uh, you know, earn a living for their family. Uh, most people don't want to do any manual labor in today's society for, you know, if you can't get out of college and make a six-figure income sitting at a desk behind a computer, people don't want to work. Uh, in any case, I'm, I'm rambling on. This video is starting to get long, so I'm going to cut this off here. We'll continue this on next week with the next uh, blog of A Week in the Life of a Model Railroader. And we'll go from there with this one and start something else probably. And, uh, you know, we'll see you next week. Thanks for sharing this time with me. Like and subscribe to the channel. And, uh, you know, just enjoy the hobby. Happy model railroading.